Christopher Rosen from Gold Derby. I'm so pleased to be joined by Mark Forrester, the director of A Man Called Otto. Mark, uh, the movie's so great. Obviously, it's a very successful novel, also a very successful uh, Swedish film before it. And this version is also very successful, I think, on as and on its merits. So how did? But I guess where did you start, and how did you wanted to approach your version of this story? You know, I, I read the book first, and then saw the movie, and I felt this is such a universal story that needs to be shared with even more people because uh, you know we, it's such a life affirming story. And uh, you know, when David McGee and I started to, to uh, you know work uh, work on the adaptation, it's it was ultimately you know, trying to figure out how it organically fits into an American story and make it American. And, uh, and you know, that some, somehow I thought it would be much more difficult at the beginning, but but uh, it, Otto is such a universal character that really everybody can relate to him and everybody knows an Otto or sees aspects of Otto in themselves, like every film director probably on the planet. And, and then, uh, you know, so that's how we started working and, and, it, uh, and I, I felt that, uh, that you know, we were very. I wanted to make sure we don't disappoint the readers because the mo the novel sold ten million copies, and we're really honoring the book. So we stick very close to the source material, and uh, and that's and Frederick Beckman, who saw the movie, felt uh, was very happy about that. He said, "Oh, you're so close to the book. I'm really excited about that." Oh, that's great. That's funny you said that about directors. I'm surprised you're you're saying you walk around sometimes thinking people are idiots for not understanding how things are supposed to work, right? <laughs> yes, of <course>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, you, you mentioned like an Americanized version of this, obviously having Tom Hanks, who's like the most American, I feel like actor and certainly like everyone has a familiarity with having him in that role. It does a long way of Americanizing the story as well, even though I think, like you said, the character is super universal and so are the themes. The other thing about this, I think, with Tom is that like he's very funny and it's a, like at times almost a straight up comedy performance, even though obviously there's a lot more nuance to it. Hasn't really done that a lot in recent years, obviously, like he's, I think obviously people maybe know him from the eighties comedies, but like, he's so, I guess, can you talk about as a director with Tom, like getting to, you know, extend his comedy muscles or how you kind of worked on that and how funny certain scenes should be and how he should play them, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, first one has to know everything. What you hear about Tom Hanks is true. He is the nicest person in Hollywood and he does have no ego and he's such so lovely to collaborate with. And, you know, we, we worked on, I thought, uh, you know, I loved all these physical comedies he did in the eighties. And I thought we really should tap into that, that he is physically so funny and we should really bring that out of him. And, uh, and also his comedic timing is incredible. So that the great thing is about, he's such a great dramatic actor and comedic actor and, has so much physicality that it makes it just uh, really pop and and you know the, the the great the thing about Otto is he's so grumpy that you don't want to uh you know it could be easily that you f have disliked this character but Tom is so likable that he makes you makes him so charming even he's so grumpy I mean it's it's extraordinary everybody else you probably would would, would wouldn't like but because Tom Hanks plays this role it's just uh it, it becomes charming it really does. Was there were I mean, and I was thinking that too, because I'm like, oh, I was wondering, are there points where you had to be like, actually, Tom, be less charming because <laughs> you need yes. to be a little more, a <laughs> little more curt. So some sometimes there were moments in, in you know when it just started in the first scene of the movie when when he's in in the in the hardware store. I, I feel like you you need to just uh, let's let's not to be too friendly. Let's try to to stay stay a little more grumpy here. <laughs> it's so funny. Yes. Um, yeah. You also surround him with like this great cast. I, I want to actually start with like you have the key flashbacks with uh, a Tom where you needed a young person to play Tom and you end up with uh, his son, which I thought was like remarkable because there are certain shots, even though I don't know that this thing necessarily look exactly alike because we all know kind of like what Tom Hanks look like. But there are certain shots. There's a shot where he's walking from the back and I swear it looks just like Tom Hanks's yeah. gait. You know, he has the same movement and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like decide like that process to like going forward with Tom's son uh in that flashback capacity because I think it's like really another great thing about the film and and as we were casting it I was lo looking at different options and actors and so on but but the, the great thing is about Truman is he you know he he reminds you a little bit of of Tom in in the 80s when he did like Splash and Big and all these movies and he's not an actor he's actually a DP and wants to be a DP and then when I met him uh, that Tom and Rita said, oh, I don't think our son wants to do this. Uh, he doesn't want to act. And I said, let's just meet. And, and we, we had a conversation and, and I said, look, you just try to 
I tried to make him comfortable and to try to be yourself and be relaxed. And he really did a great job. And Rachel Keller, who plays Sonia opposite him, is so, you know, was so uh, helpful also just to really make him, bring him, make him at ease. And it was just a lovely, lovely, lovely connection. Yeah, it's really great. I think it really does adds like a little, a uh, little something to the movie. I also want to ask you about uh, Mariana Trevino, who plays um, Marisol, I just think is wonderful. And the chemistry she has with Tom is so great. And I just, again, I thought that was like really great casting and a great match. Can you talk about how you kind of like worked with her and like found her, I guess, for that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah my cast director, Francine Maisler said, look, there's this, this uh, comedic actress out of Mexico called Mariana Trevino. You should look at her audition tape. And so she sends me the tape over and it's Mariana in a hotel room by herself talking into an iPhone. And usually an actor has someone they read, they read opposite with, you know? She didn't. She did all the lines herself and Tom's lines and her husband's lines for the scene where she puts a foot in the door when he slaps the door on her. And I, I was like, so she does her lines and she does his lines. So always it's like back and forth conversation in two different, three different characters, really. And I was laughing my head off. I never seen anything like it. It was so funny. And she just talks straight into the head, uh, into the cell phone. And, and I think this, this is incredible. And, uh, and I don't want to see anybody else. So I was so taken by, by this one tape that I said, I just don't want to see anybody else. So we went on a, on a zoom and I just thought she was fantastic. And that's how I casted her. And I got really lucky because she brings it. She brings so much heart, humor, uh, in, into the movie and her and Tom have this incredible comedic, uh, how they comedically play off each other is just brings so much lot like light into the film. Were you able to do a lot of like prep time with the actors? Cause I feel like the cast gels really well. And like you have this massive star with Tom and then a lot of like really great actors in these other roles that are not obviously like massive Tom Hanks level stars. Right. But they're obviously really, really talented. And I just thought the whole thing worked so well as a group. Were you able to do like rehearsals with them or how did you kind of like prep for it with the cast? Yeah, we had like a, a week of rehearsal and we, we you know, right through the script and we did some blocking on the location, but it really helped, especially to get them all used to to the way Tom works and and get, get accustomed that that how, how, what, how lovely it is to work with him. And, and it, uh, and ultimately it became very, that week helped us tremendously just get that connection the chemistry right and but you know you don't want to over rehearse because you want to try to keep the magic for the screen and uh and i, th I think so we just did enough that's nice yeah you don't want to leave it in the locker room is right that's the that's a that's a cliche exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you worked i mean you worked with so many looking at your resume you've worked in like a lot of different style films a lot of massive like world-renowned actors right like brad pitt and tom hanks like all these different people i guess like you know what is it about your style as a filmmaker that lets you because i'd imagine that's like difficult right to like kind of work with people who are so uh famous and like are known for doing certain things and like kind of maybe pushing them out of their comfort zones or bringing them back to something they haven't done for a while like here with tom and, and, and a man called otto i guess how do you how do you work with like talent, like that level, a uh, caliber of actor as a director, I guess. And, you know, when you look at, at like at Tom Hanks, he's truly, I think the best actor I've ever worked with. I mean, he's a whole different caliber of an actor and he's like a great violinist who is just plays, plays his instrument. And you just listen if there is ever a note that isn't right or doesn't ring right. And you as a director pointed out, but, uh, and, and I, you just try to elevate and bring the magic. So it's a constantly you, you're listening and fine tuning, you know, and and it's it's some someone who is that good and has done has been a movie star for forty years and still loves doing it and brings passion and joy to the craft. It's just uh, such a joyful collaboration. It's pretty truly the best that I had in my life with someone because our sensitivities really matched. And he brings uh, you know so much emotional intelligence and intellectual intelligence to the role that when when we when I have an idea I just threw it at him and he said oh let me let, let, let show you this. And he just shows you right that, and or I, or I have another idea, and and it's the, this kind of flexibility to to fine tune the performance and do different things. It's really extraordinary. This is the kind of movie I feel like that I would say is like people will say like they don't make movies like this anymore, right? That kind of thing, even though they kind of obviously do because you did make this, but you have like a movie star in this, and it's like an adult drama, let's say, right? Or like you know a universal story. There's not like oh, it's not like a lot of obviously special effects or all these different things. I guess for you as a, a filmmaker, how important is it to have you know, get these opportunities to make something like this and like, you know, kind of like keep telling these stories, especially for a theatrical audience where obviously we've seen, it's very easy to imagine something like this being a streaming thing or whatever, and maybe getting a little lost, but here in a theatrical capacity, you know, people, more people will probably get to see it, obviously. 
I, I, you know, I hope really that people will go go and see it because it's a life affirming story. It's about a community coming together, and it has a lot of heart. And I think it's 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 a story that should be experienced in a theater because it's a communal experience. Because in the theater, you laugh and you cry and you enjoy something together. And it and it's and that's I think the beauty about this film that to experience it in in a community in a communal setting is really right. And you know, Hollywood used to make a lot of movies like this less and less. And I I, I really hope this movie does well that more movies like this can get made. Yeah. You also are, are working obviously with, with Rita Wilson on this as the produ- as one of the producers. And obviously she's married to Tom, but I know she has a great, she has a great original song here in, in the movie as well. Um, like how did that conversation go? And like, obviously she's the producer. So what if, I guess like, Hey, how did that conversation go? And then be like, obviously as a producer had like, are you like, Oh, producer Rita, this song that songwriter Rita wrote is not maybe is not working or how did that whole thing work? I guess that's I, I mean, it was, it was interesting. So I was listening to some of her music and then suddenly I was saying, you know what, Rita, you should write a song for this. And then she said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, yeah. And I said, Oh, was that a mistake? Sure, because if the song doesn't kind of, that doesn't turn out well, what am I going to say then? Uh, but then, so one morning I woke up and she she sent me the song and I started listening to it and uh, and I just fell in love with it till you're home and uh, I think it it really captured sort of the essence and the emotional uh, sort of uh, fabric of the movie and I, and it all worked out well. So it was a po- positive experience. Nice. So you didn't have sense. to tell, you didn't have to say, producer Rita, this is, not, you have to talk to <laughs> songwriter Rita. I don't know what yeah. she's doing over there. <laughs> exactly. No, that didn't happen. I, I was very blessed. I had a moment like, what am I going to do then if that happens? But I think at the end of the day, you have to be honest. And I think she would have understood. But uh, luckily, we didn't have to go there. Yeah. And then I guess also like in this movie, like like we said, like the book is a bestseller, millions of copies, millions of people have read it. The movie was a huge success. And like, you know, you have this now your your version as well. How do you I guess how how do you view the whole like like you said, I think the the characters universe and I think the message is really kind of carried through these versions. But I guess how do you view the initial how do you view it differently or if at all, like now that you've made it, you know what I mean? How do you view this story now that you've gotten to put your own spin on it, I guess? I, you know, I, it, I really, you know, try to, to, to make, make it my own and my own fabric and own visual style. And it's the style and my own comedic style and, and sort of the silver lining between drama and comedy, you know, between light and dark and obviously out of loneliness and then coming out that he, he finds purpose in life and wants to live again. So, so all of that, you know, that, that, that silver lining was very important and also trying to find the language between flashbacks and present day, you know, and sometimes putting the glimpses of, of auto in, into the flashbacks and, and, you know, working with Tom Newman, who, uh, the, the composer, the score to, to weave together the present day and, 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 and the past, because that's emotionally, you don't want, you don't want to, you know, lose that. And, in you know, in the ri- original, we stuck much more in a sense, in that sense to the book, but in the original they, the flashbacks are sometimes much longer, you know, versus in hours uh, or in the Swedish version. In our, in, in the American version, it's it's a little bit, they're a little bit more shorter, more in a in a different way. The storytelling is a little different. Yeah, for sure. I love the visual style that you bring to it. I guess, did you, are you going in, like, do you have ideas or like, or do you have like a mood board or like, how do you kind of like want to make it look visually when you're going into a project like this? You know, I think for for a lot of it is is you know I start with a mood board with with colors and tones and and a lot of it to to go to my production designer, costume designer, my DP and everybody to see to tell them how I would like it lit, what the color tones are, what the colors are I want in the film. Uh, the street when we found it, you know, Barbara Lang, the production designer, talked at length, you know, what the color is, how, how I want the street to be, how it feels right. And and so we and that and including that the DP and the cost design all as a, as a team, you know, as as a collaboration and and download constantly what's in my head to make them understand. And I think you know as a director the key thing is that this communication. I guess like with everything in life, <laughs> but it's like clear communication. What what you have in your head and show it to people visually and tell them and reinforce that. And it's an ongoing conversation. And uh, and then ultimately, once you shoot the film and you go into editing, then you deal, you work with your editor and you make sure that that it all fits right and you fine tune it and massage it, especially the ins and out of these these flashbacks, which are the trickiest, you know, because if you have a normal scene, you do coverage and you can cut it. But if you're doing these transitional scenes constantly, it's it's uh, it's something 
that that's that looks very easy, but it's not. But it isn't as easy as it looks. But you want to make it look easy. That's everything. Oh, that's so so smooth. I don't even feel it exactly. That's what I'm going after for after. But it's very hard to achieve. It truly, yeah. I was gonna say it's like the effortlessness is what makes it so effortful, right? I guess, right? Yes, for, for your exactly. Work. Yeah, it's, it's like it's if beautiful. you. <laughs> I think the flash. I think the way you structure it is really great. And last thing here, I I know we have to wrap up, but I wanted to talk about the location because I found the just their complex so incredible. And I was just like, never really seen anything like that before in America, I guess. And like, how much time did you spend trying to find that kind of like apartment like built like home layout that you have in the film? I just think it's great. So, so we were shooting in Pittsburgh and the uh, location scout was going out and showing us this different locations and we just couldn't find the right one. And then suddenly uh, uh, we went home one day and then Barbara Ling, the production said, you know what? I'm just gonna go on Google, Google earth. And so she, she just went on Google Earth and the next day said, look, I found this street. Why don't we look at it? So she, we gave it to the production, uh, to the location manager and we come to the street and we look at it and said, that's it. And we built a slapped the gate up in the front of it, painted the houses. And it happened to be that the new owner of that, of that real estate uh, part uh, of that, of that street uh, his, uh, his wife's favorite actor is Tom Hanks. So he was very willing to make a deal with us. Okay, I was gonna say probably a good bet based on somebody's favorite actor is gonna be Tom Hanks, but that's also yeah. very fortuitous as well. Uh, Mark Forster, director of A Man Called Otto, coming out in December later this month, and then wider release in January. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. 